Hey, what's up guys? Today I'll show you a horror film, Night of the Scarecrow. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with Claire driving to the auditorium for the groundbreaking ceremony of the town's new mall. While there, Claire witnesses two men named Dylan and Danny who are arguing and catching everyone's attention. However, Claire's beauty catches Dylan's attention, so he walks beside her as the mayor starts his speech about improving and urbanizing their farming town by building infrastructure. As he speaks, Dylan begins to badmouth the mayor and compares him to typical politicians who are all about business and money. After the speech, the mayor walks towards Claire and Dylan, and surprisingly, Claire calls the mayor her dad. Dylan instantly feels ashamed of himself. He keeps quiet until the mayor talks to him about giving Danny a second chance to work for him. Shortly after, Dylan leaves them, and the mayor expresses his displease and embarrassment about Claire flirting with a guy beneath their family's stature. Claire tries to explain herself, but the mayor refuses to listen, so she instead lies to him that she has invited Dylan to their family reunion that will happen that evening. After that, Claire leaves to find Dylan and lies to him that her dad invited him to dinner. She says that her dad is fond of him. Meanwhile, as they ride the carousel, Danny watches them from nearby. He is pissed off because Dylan fired him from the construction project. So to take revenge, he and his friend use Dylan's bulldozer and crash their way through the cornfield center where they find a scarecrow. Both men are drunk, so they do not notice something near the scarecrow until they feel the bulldozer hit something. Danny receives the machine to check and they see a broken stone tablet on the ground. The drunken duo laughs at what they did, then Danny leads his friend to get something. Then, Danny's friend pisses on the scarecrow, and while he does so, he feels the wind getting stronger and stronger until he falls onto the ground. The sudden turn of events makes him scream as he crawls away, but then the cornstalks start to attack him, like they have a life on their own. Then after a few minutes, the cornstalks stop attack, and the strong wind suddenly stops. So Danny's friend quickly tries to leave when his back bumps into Danny. Danny helps his friend stand up, and the friend immediately tells him that there is something in the cornfield, and then he leaves instantly. Danny just laughs at his friend, thinking he is just drunk. Simultaneously, Dylan shows up at Claire's house all dressed up to impress Claire's dad. Claire lets him in, and introduces him to her extended family. Claire starts with her bald uncle, nicknamed Uncle Baldy, who handles the prosperous family farm that will soon turn into a mall. Next, she introduces her pastor, with his wife and their daughter. Then the last one is her sheriff uncle, short named the sheriff, also with his family. After the introduction, everyone gathers around the dining table. As they feast, Dylan talks to Claire about the corn on the table. Claire shares that it comes from the cornfield that their family has owned for decades, so it will be the last time they get to eat corn as her dad will turn the field into a mall. Meanwhile, as the moon passes by the cracked stone in the cornfield, a bright light starts to come out and it suddenly hits the scarecrow. Because of that, the scarecrow rise as the corn straws from the ground get sucked into it, giving it life and strength. The lighting vanishes as soon as it gets filled up, so the scarecrow frees and leaves the cornfield. Later that night, while Uncle Baldy is watching TV, he suddenly hears noises outside. So, he stands up and checks out the outside from the doors and windows, but he fails to see anything. At that same time, Claire informs her dad that she will visit Uncle Baldy before the night ends. But as usual, Claire's dad does not believe her and thinks she will only go out to flirt man's hormones. Despite that, Claire still decides to leave back with Uncle Baldy, who's in the window wondering where the noises came from. Then suddenly, he gets yanked out from the window, like someone strongly pulled him out. But when he checks his surroundings, he sees no one. Pissed off, Uncle Baldy takes his shotgun when he sees the farmhouse's door and realizes that the culprit is inside. Uncle Baldy walks inside and wanders the place, looking for the culprit when the lights start to explode. So he opens the disc harrow's light to continue his search. But then, Uncle Baldy sees a shadow behind his back, so he turns around, and the Scarecrow punches him. Then the Scarecrow starts the machine and pins Uncle Baldy to the wall using a garden fork. Uncle Baldy struggles to free himself, as the tool is buried deep into the wall, so he can only scream in pain and panic, as the machine tears his body to death. Simultaneously, Claire arrives at Uncle Baldy's property, and sees that the farmhouse's door is open. So she walks towards it, when she catches a glimpse of the Scarecrow running into the cornfield, Claire dismisses it and gets inside, where she sees the disturbing death of Uncle Baldy. The following day, Claire informs her dad and her uncles on what she knows about Uncle Baldy's death. She tells them about this strange man-like figure she saw running to the field last night. Claire's dad thinks it was an accident as Uncle Baldy is an alcoholic, but the pastor and the sheriff think otherwise. After that, the pastor goes to the cornfield and sees the cracked ground. 
As soon as he sees it, the pastor asks the Lord Jesus to protect them, as if something evil buried underground has been freed. Later that day, Claire argues with her dad again about Uncle Baldy's death. Claire's dad tries to convince her that it was an accident. Although Claire knows it is not, she doesn't know why everyone in the town seems to act like they are hiding something. Frustrated, Claire decides to go out, and while she is driving, she sees the scarecrow standing behind her in the rearview mirror. She quickly turns around, but no one is there. Then suddenly, Dylan appears, which startles her. But Claire still invites him to drink. They go to a bar, where Dylan and Danny engage in a scuffle, because Danny still hasn't moved on about Dylan firing him. But before they hurt each other, Claire stops them. The two guys part their ways, with Danny leaving the bar with his friends. Meanwhile, the pastor scolds his daughter about the adult catalog that arrived in the mail. After that, he heads to the church to work on Uncle Baldy's funeral, but temptation comes to him, and he checks out the catalog, which consists of women in their lingerie. As he imagines those women, he suddenly hears a woman's voice calling him. The pastor follows the woman's seductive voice up to the altar, where he finally realizes his sin. The pastor quickly kneels, and asks for forgiveness for taking the church. However, when he looks up, he sees the scarecrow in front of the cross, so the pastor quickly backs up to leave. But the scarecrow stops him. He demands the scarecrow to speak, and it obliges by pulling the stitches on its mask, revealing a real mouth inside. The scarecrow demands to know where its book is, and when the pastor refuses to give an answer, it stitches the pastor's mouth. The pastor holds his sewn mouth as he runs and breaks a window to leave the church. Meanwhile, Claire and Dylan start to get to know each other, and after a few minutes of a series of questions, the two start tum massaging. Concurrently, the pastor's daughter and Danny sneak out to a van in the middle of a field, where they also start to get sexy. After a few minutes of tum massaging, Danny steps out to drink a beer, so the pastor's daughter wears headphones while she waits. Suddenly, the scarecrow shows up and knocks Danny unconscious. After that, the scarecrow goes inside the van and holds the pastor's daughter in one hand, while it grows a seed out of its finger. It forcefully shoves its whole fist to the pastor's daughter, and while it does so, the scarecrow moans like it is releasing his hormones. Moments later, Danny finally wakes up and thinks he passed out from a hangover. So he checks out the pastor's daughter, who is miraculously alive, but not for long. Cornstalks start to come out from her breasts, then they spurt out from her limbs, until they finally come out from her mouth. Danny quickly escapes, as the cornstalks pull the pastor's daughter out of the van and drag her underground. Danny immediately runs away and rests on bales of hay, where the scarecrow strangely morphs out from the hay. The scarecrow laughs as it walks towards Danny, screaming in fear. Following that, the sheriff argues with the mayor as they found Danny's van with blood all over it, and his body was torn apart like something not human killed him. The mayor tries to convince the sheriff that the suspect is Dylan, because he and Danny had a fights. But the truth is the mayor does not want Dylan for Claire. Instead of worrying about his family, the selfish mayor instructs the sheriff to solve the murders as soon as possible, as he does not want to taint the town's image by the killings. The scene changes to Claire and Dylan dressing up, and Claire suddenly feels something strange is going on in her family. As soon as they got dressed, the pastor suddenly barges in, scaring the hormones out of the two. However, they quickly help the pastor, as they see his sewn mouth. Then Claire gently removes the stitches, and as soon as she is done, the pastor starts to rumble about his family history. It's revealed that their ancestor, Silas, was the town's spiritual man a hundred years ago. So the townspeople came to him when drought spread. They asked Silas for help, but there was nothing he could do. But just when they thought they would die of starvation, a warlock wandered into town and offered Silas a bargain. He promised to give them wealth and make their farms prosperous, as long as he would get complete freedom to do whatever he wanted. At first, everything occurred well accordingly. But everything comes with a price, especially when you make a pact with the devil. The warlock lured women in the town and harassed them, even Sila's daughter. Because of that, Sila's decided to do something. Sila's took the warlock's magic spellbook and turned his magic against him. One night, Sila's drugged the warlock and had the warlock drag into the cornfield at dawn. Next, they tied him to a cross, watched his body burn. After that, they put his charred bones into his special casket and buried it deep into the underground. So as long as his coffin remains undisturbed, the farming industry will grow. In order to stop the revived warlock, the pastor informs Claire and Dylan that they need to get his magic spellbook, which was given to her dad from their ancestors. They need to get the book before the warlock, who now appears to be a scarecrow, finds it. Once he does, he will use it to become human again, and if that happens, he will be unstoppable. However, not even he knows where Claire's dad hid it, so Claire instructs Dylan to take the pastor home while she goes to her dad's house to find the book. Meanwhile, the mayor is in his living room, the lights flick, and then the telephone rings. As the mayor prepares to answer it, the scarecrow suddenly appears and hurts him. It uses a fireplace poker and a sword to pin the mayor's body to the wall. 
The mayor screams and grunts as the scarecrow deepen the stabs. Then the scarecrow asks where its book is, but the mayor refuses to tell him. So the warlock shows a corn straw into him, and within a few seconds, it spreads across his body and fills him up, bursting from every single part of his body. The scarecrow laughs crazily as it watches the mayor suffering. Meanwhile, Dylan gets the pastor home and prepares to give him tea. While he waits, the pastor goes upstairs to check on his wife, who is unfortunately dead. Her sewing kit was sewn onto her face. As the pastor mourns his wife's death, the scarecrow suddenly comes out from behind the door and then locks it. The pastor uses a crucifix to defeat the scarecrow, but he only laughs at him. Downstairs, the sheriff arrives and points his gun at Dylan, still under the impression that Dylan is a suspect. Dylan explains himself, so he and the sheriff go upstairs for the pastor. However, the door is locked, so the sheriff breaks it, and they see the pastor and his wife both lifeless bodies. The pastor had his inhaler tied to his mouth using a barbed wire. Because of that, the sheriff aims his gun again, but Dylan tells him that the door is locked from inside. However, the sheriff is still unconvinced, so he cuts Dylan before they leave to find Claire. Simultaneously, Claire arrives at her dad's house and finds him dead, hanging on the wall covered with corn straws. After a few seconds, the sheriff comes and sees the mayor, and he realizes that Dylan is telling the truth. Claire informs the sheriff that they need to find the book, and the sheriff remembers that the mayor told him about a hidden floorboard compartment in the attic. The two go to the attic and search for the secret compartment, while Dylan is inside the police car, desperately trying to free himself. Claire and the sheriff find it underneath a giant crucifix, so they immediately remove the wood when the scarecrow suddenly shows up. The sheriff instructs Claire to get the book, while repeatedly shooting the scarecrow. Eventually, his bullets run out. Claire finally gets the book and immediately leaves the attic. The scarecrow grabs a nearby sickle and reaps off the sheriff's throat. After that, he chases Claire, but luckily she manages to get the police car and drive before the scarecrow catches her. Claire later gives the book to Dylan. Dylan browses it and finds a bookmark stuck onto the spell that will kill the warlock. It says that all they need is to destroy the bones, and the warlock will vanish forever. But they suddenly run into a roadblock with two cops, who try to arrest them as they are driving the sheriff's car. Claire attempts to explain what is happening, but the cops refuse to listen. Then they hear their tires getting popped, so one of the cops goes back to check it out despite Claire's warning. As expected, the scarecrow shows up and kills the cop with the sickle. Claire and Dylan immediately get back in the car and drive away, while the scarecrow kills the other cop. However, the scarecrow throws the sickle at them, which crashes through the back window. Claire loses control because of that, and the car hits a ditch. Fortunately, the vehicle does not flip off, so Claire and Dylan run inside a stock house on the construction site, trying to collect the warlock's bones and burn them with chemicals. Just as they walk towards the door, they hear the scarecrow trying to barge in, so they use the emergency exit instead. They run into the cornfield center and Dylan immediately crawls into the hole, while Claire holds his legs. Dylan finds the casket, so he tries to reach it when the warlock suddenly shows up. He stomps on Claire's hand, dropping Dylan into the hole. The scarecrow grabs the book and starts reading a spell, so to hold him off, Claire uses a torch. Then she drops the chemical bottle to Dylan to put on the casket, the scarecrow's power slowly comes back to him. He pushes Claire onto the ground, and shatters the chemical bottle that Dylan is holding in a wave of a hand. After that, he pulls up his casket of bones, but Claire uses the hatches and slices off the scarecrow's arm. The casket falls onto the ground, so Claire takes it, when the scarecrow uses his other hand and grabs Claire's foot. Claire stumbles with the coffin, and suddenly the scarecrow wails like he is in pain. Claire sees that and realizes something, so she repeatedly slams the casket on the ground. Then, Claire runs off and the scarecrow follows her. A few minutes later, Claire bumps into the scarecrow, causing her to drop the casket. Unexpectedly, the sheriff shows up, and he repeatedly shoots the scarecrow, but his bullets run out again. Claire uses that opportunity and takes the casket with her as she runs away. Then, the sheriff removes a glove, but he blows it upon his hand, killing the sheriff with tiny shards of corn straw. Claire makes it into the storage, but then she trips onto the door, which causes her to spill everywhere. Claire crawls back as the warlock picks up his bone. Dylan shows up and drags Claire away near the emergency exit. Then he pours gas around the chemicals and tries to light, but his lighter malfunctions. So Claire lights a flare, tosses it to the gas trail, and runs away with Dylan. The scarecrow stares as the fire spreads, and the stockhouse explodes within seconds. However, the scarecrow is still alive. It knocks out Dylan and ties Claire to a pole using a barbed wire. Then he gets another seed out from his finger and tries to put it in Claire's mouth. Fortunately, Dylan recovers and sees the casket of bones on the ground. So he takes it and starts a piece of construction equipment. The scarecrow hears the machine, so he walks towards Dylan. He sees Dylan looking at him, 
and Dylan smashes the warlock's casket into pieces, which finally kills the scarecrow. The film ends with Dylan freeing Claire. Claire spits the seed, and the ground swallows it, signifying that the scarecrow monster might wait for the next chance to be revived. This is Daniel's CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.